Hello, and welcome to 5 Minutes of Postgres. My name is Lucas, and today we're going to talk about tuning a Postgres Brin index and how to decide whether to use Brin based on PG stats statistics. We'll start with this blog post by Janet Carson, where she describes how she scored a big win by adding a properly thought out Brin index to a particular table. And I like the notion of Brin indexes as something you need to think about, because Brin indexes are sometimes a really good fit, but sometimes a really bad fit. And so it is important to understand when they work well. A Brin index is a block range index. It's essentially a very lightweight index that works well for tables where the data is banded together in physical storage. The way that Janet describes this is, for example, if you have a table where you're adding data chronologically, and you also have a date column, then the, you can think of the physical layout of the table to be banded by date. If you had a particular date, for one row, the date on the next row is most likely going to be the same date or the next day's date. There's this correlation between the physical order and the values of a particular column. The way that Brin works is it stores the minimum and maximum value of the index column for each block range. Block range would be something like page 1 to page 10. And then it would say for the date column, the minimum value I've seen is this, for the maximum value I've seen is this. When Postgres executes a query and uses the print index, what it's able to do is able to use the print index to identify which part of the table to look at. The print index is always going to be fuzzy. It's not going to give you an exact row like a B-tree index does, but it is very small. And that has a lot of benefits in terms of caching behavior and such. An important decision you need to make when you create a print index is how many pages do you want to put in each of these block ranges? The default will be 128. But if you have a very narrow table, that might be too much. You actually want print to be more specific, to have less pages per block. If you have a very wide table where you have very few rows per page, then you might actually want to increase that block size. Janet describes a query here as you can use to estimate how many rows you have in one page of your table. As Janet notes here, if you don't do the math, you'll never know. This is something where you should calculate the right number for your table. The other thing that Janet mentions here is that multi-column Brin indexes are actually really cheap because Brin is a very small index and it doesn't matter if you add additional columns, the index search effectiveness is the same regardless of which index columns the query uses. There was another blog post on Brin recently by Paul Ramsey from the Crunchy Data team and it covers a lot of the same things as Janet's post. Paul also describes a visual way of how you can think of this. Like your page one and two are part of one Brin block and page three and four are part of the other print block. On the value that's being indexed, in this case a year, you can see that the min and the max are saved for the block range. And so this is how Postgres would then use the Brin index to locate the particular block and the particular pages it's looking at. Now, if I'm in a situation where I need to make a decision whether to use Brin or not, what I can make use of is the PG stats table. PG stats is used by the Postgres planner when it makes the decision which index to use or how to get the data in the first place. PG stats is updated when you run analyze or automatically runs analyze for you. And there is a correlation column in PG stats. And the correlation column gives you the statistical correlation between the physical row ordering, the actual structure on this, and the logical ordering of column values. We can use this to get an understanding if Brin could be a good fit for our workload. So I can go to one of our own databases here and show you how that looks like. Here, I have a table called indexing engine runs. This is used inside PG Analyze to track when we make index recommendations. This table is an append-only table. And you'll note here that we actually do not have a print index, and I'll get to why in a second. But I want to describe to you what could be a use case for a print index. I can query the PG stats table, and I can look at that correlation column for this particular table. What I can see here is that the run at column you can think of this as a timestamp we assign each time we run our indexing engine. And it's because that timestamp is the current time, the value of run add highly correlates with the physical order. You can see here correlation is close to one, which is almost perfect correlation. But for example, if I looked at server ID, that does not correlate. If I had a use case for querying solely by the run at column, that will be a good fit for a brand index. However, let's say I want to query which server had a particular indexing engine run that would be a bad fit for a Brin index because Brin would query the whole table in search of a particular value. You can use the PG stats table to make decisions whether a column is a good fit for a Brin index or not. 
Thank you so much for listening. This was five minutes of Postgres. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear about next week's episode and talk to you next week.